The World's Fair Hotel, more commonly known as the H.H. H. Holmes Murder Castle, was an intricate building full of traps and secret rooms. It was designed not only to kill, but also to confuse and imprison its victims. The Devil in Me features two recreations of the murder castle. The first, seen in the prologue, purporting to be the in-game version of the original World's Fair Hotel, and later, Dumet's interpretation of the murder castle, seen in the rest of the game. But how faithful were these recreations? How accurate were the traps and features of the building? Well, let's find out. The first trap in the game, encountered by one of the unfortunate honeymooners, is an example of how the devil in me has embellished on the original murder castle. Holmes did have trap doors in his hotel, but not in the form of spike traps. Rather, Holmes's trap doors were to transport victims to the basement or to drop them into a room without doors for Holmes to toy with later. The gas chamber traps are more accurate. It is said Holmes built his castle with extensive gas lines, which all connect to a central point in his personal rooms, so that he could activate the gas valves remotely. This was reported to be a favourite of Holmes, who had both special gas chambers like the one seen in the game, and also valves leading directly into normal guest rooms, so that if he wished, he could kill a guest as they slept. The blacked out room Erin finds herself locked in appears to be part of the original murder castle design. Reconstructed blueprints from the Holmes investigation noted a dark room with a single door entrance. The castle is known to have had false walls that hinged open to allow Holmes access to the rooms in the same way Dumet did with Erin. Those rooms without doors I mentioned earlier also had these false walls so that Holmes could access his trapped victims at his will. After Erin's run-in with Dumet in the dark room, Charlie is the next to find himself in one of the murder castle's traps when he is locked in the incinerator. The real murder castle didn't have quite the same incinerator. However, there was a large kiln in the basement that served a similar purpose. It was installed by one Mr. Warner, who Holmes would describe in his confession as the originator of the Warner Glass Bending Company. Holmes had the kiln installed under the pretense of allowing Mr. Warner to display his patents in the hotel. However, once the kiln was completed, Holmes tricked Mr. Warner into entering the kiln with him by asking him to explain the mechanism of its use. Holmes then left the kiln, closed the door and turned it on. Unlike in the game, the kiln created colourless flames caused by crude oil atomizing with steam. Holmes wrote in his autobiography that the kiln would burn hot enough to melt iron and that, in only a short time, not even the bones of his victim would remain. Charlie is fortunate that the incinerator in the game is not as effective as Holmes' actual kiln, as if it was, then hiding under the grate would not have saved him. There are also some reports that suggested Holmes had at least one other room lined with metal plates and asbestos that had blowtorches installed to burn more victims alive. The vault where Kate and Erin are later trapped is also similar, but not identical to the real murder castle. Holmes did have a large airtight vault. Unlike in the game, it was only a single chamber, but the air supply could be controlled from the outside. In Holmes' version, this was done by installing pipes and a gas flame in the vault that he said was there to illuminate it. But if Holmes wished, he could blow on any of the air pipes connected to the vault to simultaneously extinguish the flame and cut the supply of oxygen to the room. When investigators entered Holmes' vault, they are said to have found claw marks in the vault walls from at least one of the victims who died there. Not found in the actual murder castle was the glass wall trap that Jamie and Kate can find themselves in, or the waste disposal system that can dispose of Charlie. The saw-inspired traps with the mannequins are also not real, but no doubt would win the approval of H.H. H. Holmes, who was always the first to lean into any rumour that increased his infamy. Finally, while not a trap, Kate's brush with an acidic nasal tube is also not accurate, but it is similar to something that Holmes would and did do. H.H. H. Holmes had an associate, Mr. Benjamin Pysel, who he killed by spiking his whiskey with chloroform, and then once he passed out, poured more chloroform down his throat until he died. It would not have been as dramatic a death as Jumet had planned for Kate, but it was similar in its intent. Additionally, Holmes was also known to use acid in his castle to dispose of bodies. The first floor of the World's Fair Hotel was occupied by stores similar to the small shop shown in the prologue. 
just more extensive, with shop owners renting the space and running their own stores. The second and third floors were where the rooms were situated. It was here that Holmes stalked his victims. There was no director suite like what we see in the game and given the time period, there were no hidden cameras or two-way mirrors. However, this isn't to say that Holmes was not spying on his victims. He was. There were a series of hidden passages, peepholes, false walls and secret staircases that allowed Holmes to move through the building unseen and spy on those who were unfortunate enough to check in. In order to confuse guests, it is reported that some rooms had no doors and some doors had no rooms. There really were doors that would open up to reveal nothing but a wall behind them. There are other rooms that were accessed only by false walls or trap doors, so anyone who became trapped inside had no way to escape. The walls were not movable in the same way they are in the game, but they did not have to be. The design of the corridors and rooms was such that Holmes was said to be the only person who really knew how to make his way around the hotel. There was no hedge maze or any grounds at all, but one part of the hotel was so difficult to navigate that it is referred to as the maze on reconstructed blueprints. The hidden passages also had another purpose. They, along with the trapdoors and chutes, allowed Holmes to take the bodies of his victims down to the basement without worrying that someone else in the building would see him. And the real horror show of the World's Fair Hotel was the basement. This was where Holmes would dispose of the bodies of his victims. There were acid vats and quick climb pits, as well as a large kiln that Holmes used to dispose of unwanted bodies of some of his victims. At the time investigators entered the basement, it was reported that they found a large number of human remains, including some in one of two quick climb vaults beneath the floor. Other victims, though, weren't so quickly disposed of. And this brings us to perhaps the most iconic feature of The Devil in Me, the animatronics. The animatronics in The Devil in Me were made from Demet's previous victims, with a couple of notable exceptions. There are three areas of Demet's hotel that are dedicated to his particular hobby. The first is the basement, which appears to be primarily used as a processing area for mannequins. The second is the Silver Ash Institute, which is a perversion of a medical clinic that may have been where the human animatronics were made. And the third is a separate building called the Curing Facility, where Demet was preserving the bodies of its previous victims. Creating the human animatronics appears to have been quite a complicated process for Demet, and it is shown in diagrams Demet keeps on the walls. As you would suspect, the animatronics and mannequins were not quite part of the true story of H.H. H. Holmes. H.H. H. Holmes was not creating animatronics from his victims, but this is not to say there are no similarities to reality. The basement of the World's Fair Hotel was reported to be used to repair some of the victims for sale. Holmes had a medical background. This both gave him the awareness of the value of the human cadaver and skeleton, as well as the skills needed to repair them. A defleshed skeleton reportedly could be sold for up to $45 at the time, which in today's money would be approximately $20,000. How many were sold in this way was never revealed. An alleged accomplice of H.H. H. Holmes named Miriam Chappelle told police that he received three corpses from Holmes to articulate before selling on to medical colleges. The room that he told police this occurred in was dubbed the room of the three corpses. But like many parts of this tale so far, this wasn't true. Miriam Chappelle was a liar, just like Holmes. The version of the murder castle discussed so far in this video is based on actual reports at the time. This version from tabloids and newspapers and the version seen in the game do have one thing most in common. They are both versions that Holmes would have enjoyed hearing about. The problem is that the actual truth of the murder castle, just like the actual story of Holmes, is likely far more mundane than the legends that surrounded it. While Holmes confessed to 27 murders, there were issues with this confession. Not least among them the fact that some of the people Holmes confessed to killing were still very much alive. Take for example our Mr. Warner, who Holmes confessed to killing in that incinerator-like kiln. He in fact was not dead at the time Holmes made this confession. He would later be located in Newton, Iowa by a journalist in 1897 and happily confirmed that he had not been murdered. Kate Durkee, one of the alleged vault victims, whom Holmes confessed to killing, also gave a similar statement in 1896, stating plainly, I have never been murdered, not by H.H. H. Holmes or by anyone else. In reality, Holmes may have killed his view as between four and nine people, still enough to make him a serial killer, but far less than the alleged 27 and far, far less than the fanciful estimates that claimed he killed over 200. The World's Fair Hotel also likely did not live up to its media reputation and myth. 
The first floor was taken up by shops. The second floor did have confusing passageways. But most interestingly, as recounted by Adam Selzer, writer of H.H. Holmes' The True History of the White City Devil, the World's Fair Hotel may have never functioned as a hotel. It is reported that the rooms on the second floor were actually designed to be long-term rental apartments. The third floor was apparently unfinished, and while Holmes had suggested this would be the hotel section, it appears no guest ever stayed there. Parts of the myth of the murder castle are quite true. There was a bank vault installed in the hotel, and the vault may have been used to suffocate victims. It is plausible that Emmeline Sigrand, one of Holmes's mistresses, did meet her end there. Anna Williams is also a possible victim of the vault. Holmes did claim that she died there, but previously had claimed to have killed her away from the murder castle. There are no confirmed victims of gas chambers in the murder castle, though two of his confirmed victims, Nellie and Alice Pycelle, were gassed in a trunk away from the murder castle. There are also no verifiable reports of Holmes selling bodies or skeletons, and police were able to establish that Mr. Chappelle was lying about his involvement with Holmes. Bones of one of the victims, likely Pearl, the young daughter of another Holmes mistress, Julia, was found in the basement and it is likely she and her mother did die in the murder castle of some means, but for most people, the murder castle was less dangerous than confusing. Ultimately, the myth of the murder castle does make for a very good story, and a scene in The Devil and Me is an excellent setting for a video game, even if its truth does not live up to its reputation.